Hello, Dr. Mintz here again. Wanted to uh, go over a basic case here. And this is just a simple case of adenopathy, a little bit of a follow-up to the recent case that we looked at with Hodgkin's disease. Now these are more traditional axial CT images, obviously. And it illustrates the importance of learning the anatomy of the mediastinal structures. And that is because knowing the anatomy and what is normal, you can discern if something is present that is abnormal. So very important to learn this anatomy, including, for example, the thoracic aortic arch and the superior vena cava. And as we go up from there, you see the great vessels, one, two, three, coming off the aortic arch brachiovalic artery, left, sub, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery. And you see the opacified superior vena cava, I'm sorry, the opacified left brachiovalic vein and the unopacified right brachiovalic vein, which if you follow them down, you'll see that they converge into the superior vena cava. It's all important not only for knowing the anatomy itself, but for recognizing things like this and it's easy to blow by them if you're not careful, but you should look at them and say, well, what is that? It doesn't seem to be any structure that I know should be there. So you worry about an enlarged lymph node. And indeed, there are several large lymph nodes. Here's one here. Here's another one here. It's right near the azicus vein. The azicus vein, you may remember, courses from posteriorly and courses over the right main stem bronchus to the superior vena cava and so the nodes in that area are often called azagous nodes so there are enlarged azagous nodes remember this is the vein which when it hooks over the right upper lobe during development causes the azagous fissure and the azagous lobe so here you see a couple enlarged nodes a couple more and more superiorly you could call them right paratracheal nodes there if they are anterior to the carina, they are precarinal nodes. I don't see any there. If they're inferior to the carina, then they're subcarinal nodes. And this looks too full for what we'd normally have there. Ordinarily, you should have the esophagus in that area, and it's probably decompressed in there. And here you can see some lower hyalur, right infrahyalur nodes. And it's all because you can appreciate the normal anatomy and see that there's something there that doesn't belong there. Now here is a node right near the left main pulmonary artery. And if we go up higher, really pretty clean in this area. This is the trachea, what would be an air-containing structure posterior to the trachea, the esophagus. So pretty straightforward case of several nodes and large nodes. Here you can see some right hyalur adenopathy. This is why IV contrast is so important. Here you can see the main pulmonary artery enhancing intensely and this structure not. The branches of the pulmonary artery are enhancing. So this distinguishes this structure as a node, a right hyalur node. And this could easily blend in with the normal pulmonary vasculature in that area if IV contrast were not given. Similarly, this node near the left pulmonary artery. Even here in the lower left hyalur region, you have some structure, some soft tissue, which does not enhance, is not related to the airway, and so you suspect a small or mildly enlarged lymph node there. So learning the anatomy and understanding the value of IV contrast is very important. And we see nodes like this sometimes in cancer, but also we can see them just as a reaction to an inflammatory process, an infection, a pneumonia. So if you see them, for example, in one hyalur area, then on the lung windows you look out carefully in that region of lung and see if there is a pneumonia because they may be nodes that are enlarged and simply reacting to an infection in a portion of the lung. This liver 
is much lower attenuation than, than the spleen because of fatty infiltration. Okay.